This is a chapter one review for Algebra 2. In section 1-1, one, one, you need to make sure that you understand the order of operations and you can apply them to the problems. Remember the, um, please excuse my dear Aunt Sal, you have parentheses, exponents, then from left to right, multiplication and division, and then from left to right, addition and subtraction. So in this particular problem, you're going to want to do your parentheses first, so you have six times uh, negative three divided by nine plus four. So from left to right, you're gonna to wanna to do all your multiplication and division, so I have 16 times negative three, which is a negative 18 divided by nine plus four. Negative 18 divided by nine is negative two, plus 4 is going to give you a positive 2. Then if you pop down to this one, you do your parentheses first, so you have 11, but then you have to multiply it by 3 before you, or multiply it by 4 before you subtract 3. So you have 44 minus 3 is equal to 41. In section 1-2, you need to know the classifications of your number. Remember, all the numbers that we've talked about up to this point are all called real numbers. And within real numbers, you have rational numbers, which the abbreviation is Q. The abbreviation for real is R. And you also have irrational numbers. which the abbreviation is I. The difference between rational over here and irrational over here is rational is predictable. If you know what's going to come next, the irrational is unpredictable. So like pi, pi continues on forever. You can know it's 3.14, but there's also a number beyond the 4. Uh, like for instance, if you have the fraction 1 7th, if you were to put that into your calculator, it would go all the way across the screen. Versus over here, rational numbers like 1 fourth is the same thing as 0.25. You know what comes next would be a zero. Or if you have 1 third, you have 0.333. And what would come next, you know, is a three. So you know what's going to come next. It's predictable or rational. Um, over here are the smallest units of rational numbers. The very first unit is called natural numbers. Natural numbers, I'll write it down here, are basically 1, 2, 3, and continuing on. Then you have whole numbers. Now what whole numbers include that natural numbers don't is O. Okay, or zero. See the O right here lets you know that you have a zero in the list of your numbers. Continues on. The abbreviation here is N. The abbreviation here is W. And then outside of those, you have integers. And the abbreviation is Z. And that's basically positive and negative whole numbers. So this time, it goes in both directions, so I have 0, 1, 2, 3, dot, dot, dot. In the other direction, it continues on, so it includes your negative numbers. So you've got to be able to get a value for things and then classify them. So 4 minus 12, let's see if I can get that. There we go. 4 minus 12 is negative 8. And when I classify that, that would be an integer, it would be a rational number, and it would be a real number. Down here we have the square root of 2 plus 3. Um, two plus, square root of 2 plus 3, if you do it on your calculator, goes on forever and ever. Um, and it's not gonna, it's not gonna end, it's not gonna finish. So you would go ahead and round it off. I don't have my calculator right here, but you can do that. So you know it's going to be an irrational real number. So you have to be able to classify those. 
Also in this unit, you are supposed to simplify these things. That means put together your like terms. So you have a 12a plus a negative 4b. Remember, your variables must exactly match for you to combine them. We also talked about properties in this chapter. Uh, we have several properties that both had addition and, and multiplication emphasis here. The commutative property is the property that you see the word commute in. So it basically is changing the order. So in addition, 1 plus 4 is the same as 4 plus 1. A multiplication, 2 times 3, is the same as 3 times 2. So commutative is always about the order of the numbers. Associative is always about who it associates with. So 1 plus 2 plus 3 equals 1 plus 2 plus 3. The order hasn't changed, but over here I can put the parentheses or I can put the parentheses there. So who they associate with changes from one side to the other. Um, multiplication, same thing, 2 times 3 times 4 equals 2 times 3 times 4. Again, the order hasn't changed. If the order changes, you're talking about commutative. So 2 and 3 hang out together or associate together on this side, and 3 and 4 associate together on that side. Identity, it's all about keeping your original look. So let's say I have the number 15. If I want to add something to 15 but not change its identity, I've got 15 plus 0 equals 15. If I want to multiply something and not change its identity, I would multiply by 1. So those are the addition and multiplication properties of your identity property. Inverse is the one that's a little bit harder. Um, if I have a negative 5, and I'm doing addition, then I want to add the opposite to it, and the opposite is just changing its sign. So the number doesn't change, but the sign changes. On the multiplication, if I have, let's say, the number 5, then I'm going to multiply by its inverse, which is going to be, I'm going to flip the number, and it's going to give me a 1. Um, if I have a mixed numeral, i got to make it into an improper fraction before I flip it. So let's say I had like three and a half, and I want to know the inverse of it, the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the two times the three, and I'm going to add a one, so that's going to give me a seven over two. I would need to multiply it by the two over seven to get the one. So this right here is the multiplicative inverse of three and a half. Distributive property is really neither addition or multiplication. It's kind of a combination of it. So if I have two times x plus 4, I'm going to distribute by multiplying the 2 times the x and the 2 times the 4, so it's going to give me a 2x plus 8. Um, in section 1.4, we talked about writing algebraic expressions and verbal expressions. Um, an algebraic expression is using numbers and letters. A verbal expression is using words. So this says the product, which means multiplication, of 4 and a number is 20, which actually gives me an algebraic equation rather than expression. So I go 4 times a number, and I can name it any, any variable I want, is the equal sign 20. Sometimes they ask me to solve it, sometimes they don't. You just need to keep that in mind so you are reading your instructions well. If they ask me to solve it, I would divide both sides by 4 and I would get n is equal to 5. Down here, they give me an algebraic expression, and I need to write it as a verbal expression. Well, notice you have a sum here. So I would say the sum of 4 and a number multiplied by x squared. If you can read this, you can write it. Okay, it's very 
very easy to go from this side to this side. Just read it and write down your words. All right, so then you had a section on solving. Now remember, solving involves doing the opposite of what you have going on in the problem. So like, for instance, on this one, I have minus 3. So to get rid of that 3, I want to add 3. So I have 14y is equal to 28. I'm going to divide by the 14. And I'm going to get a final answer of y equals 2. Here, I have 4 minus 2 times 1 minus w. I've got to get rid of that 4 first, so I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides. That's going to give me, and maybe I want to go ahead and distribute here. I have a negative 2 times a 1, which is negative 2, and I have a negative 2 times a negative w, which gives me a 2w equals, um, that's going to give me a 40, negative 42. I want to add 2 to both sides. I'm going to have to continue it over here. So I have 2w is equal to negative 40. I'm going to divide by the 2, and I get w equals negative 20. Now, you know you can always check it by plugging it back in. Sometimes they ask you to solve for a variable without any numbers. This particular one asks you to solve for s. So I want to get rid of everything except for the s right here in this equation. So I'm going to subtract the p from both sides. Remember what you do to one side, you have to do to the other side. So I have a minus p is equal to p times r times s. If it's multiplied by r, and p, the way to get rid of it is you divide. So I'm going to divide both sides by p times s, or p times r. So I have s is equal to a minus p divided by p times r. You have some more properties that you hit. You have the reflexive property. If you think about when you look in a mirror, it reflects back. Reflexive property just says 4 equals 4. Symmetric property means that I can switch sides of an equation. So if x is equal to 4, then it is legal for me to say 4 equals x. Transitive property says if a equals b and b equals c, then a equals c. There's a tie between two equations right there. You have to have the tie to have transitive property. Um, so I could say x is equal to 4, and 4 is equal to y, so I can conclude x equals y. That's transitive property. Um, substitution property, we use this all the time to, so to check a problem. If you tell me that x is equal to 4, and then down here you go 3 times x minus 4, and I want to know the value, I substitute the 4 in for the x, so I have 12 minus 4 equals 8. The next section had to do with solving absolute values. Anytime you have absolute values, you are going to have two answers. Um, before you ever start your problem, you're going to get rid of everything that isn't in the absolute value. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to add 2 to both sides, which is going to give me the absolute value of y minus 5 equals 12. Now I can begin my problem. So now I set up two problems, knowing that what's inside the absolute value can either equal 12 or what's inside the absolute value can equal a negative 12 because I'm going to take the absolute value of it, which is going to give me 12. So now I solve these two. Um, I'm going to quickly solve them, and then I'm going to have to start a new video. So I'm going to add 5 to both sides, so y is equal to 17. And here, when I add 5 to both sides, I'm going to get a negative 7 right there. So my two answers are 17 and 7. Make sure you plug them back in to make sure they work, because they don't always. So I'm going to stop the video, and then I'll start a new one.